right, so uh, today, you know, I wanted to talk to you about something. Firstly, I'm not here to preach anything. I can't. I really can't. I just want to talk to you about uh, some of my experiences. Um, so today, I wanted to talk to you about the blind spot. You know, when I talk about blind spot, the first thing that comes to my mind is my career. Yeah, that's the biggest blind spot of my life. Why I say that? Because, you know, when I was in school, which is around 20 years back, don't start calculating my age. <laughs> uh, that time, if somebody even thought of being a host, you know, a career as a host, profession as a host, people would say, ah, okay, what does your son do? Oh, he's a host. Oh, lovely. What does he do for a living? <laughs> so that was the question. So not, uh, not too many people could even think of. Uh, honestly, even I never thought of that, you know, that I wanted to have a career as a host or I will be able to make a career as a host, as an actor. So if I, if I talk to you about my school days, I'm from APJ Sheikh Sarai. Uh, uh, I, had, had a, I had a wonderful time in my school. I think those were the best days of my life. No, I'm not going to sing Summer of 69. That is the line from there. But I'm not going to sing any of songs here. But yeah, um, those are the wonderful days, simpler days. You know, I was a happy child. I had a wonderful schooling. I, I was an outstanding student, always standing out of the class. <laughs> but yeah, I, I had a wonderful time. But you know, I, I was thinking that, you know, I, I never wanted to really study too much, you know, get 100%, 90%. I said, yeah, but I'll have to finish my schooling. How do I do that? I said, okay, there's a trick. Teachers, be the favorite student. You know, be the happy boy. You know, be the yes boy. Yes, Ma'am, I'll do this for you. I'll help you out. So I was always like that. And yes, I was the favorite among the t amongst the teachers. No, I'm not being pompous. I'm, trust me, I, I'm really saying that. Uh, that's, the, that's the key to my um, schooling. Yeah, that's how I finished my school. Uh, so, you know, um, those, were the th those were the things, but um, everything was going happy. You know, my friends were there. We had a huge gang. You know, we would uh, uh, play together, volleyball games, cricket, uh, you know, picnics, and, you know, a lot of cultural festivals happening in the school. I would be participating. You know, all that was happening. Everything was going happy. I was the king of my life, the happy space. I said, wow, I'm sorted. You know, this is it. And trust me, that is the time that line struck me. Somebody said, time flies. I saw that happen because suddenly I saw I was in the 12th grade and all my friends were planning something in their life. They were going for something called career counseling. So there was a new room formed in the school and there was a huge board, career counseling, and I would often stand outside and see, is ka matlab kya hai? Because I had no plans for myself. But my friends, they were planning, somebody wanted to be a lawyer, somebody wanted to be a doctor, somebody said, I'll go to the US for further studies. So you know, everybody had something or the other. But that was one question I never had an answer to, uh, what do I want to do in life? But then, obviously, uh, I had to graduate. Now, there's a story to my graduation also. Again, you must be thinking, this boy who didn't want to study, why did he graduate? So the story goes, um, graduation happened because my then girlfriend, who's my wife now, she had a condition. She said, Manish, I'll marry you only if you're a graduate. <laughs> so I finished my graduation to get married. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I thought, okay, fine, I'm sorted. But then after graduation, again, there was a blind spot. I said, um, now what? What happens next? I have no idea. So my father's a chartered accountant. So he told me, Manish, you have to do something in life. What are your plans? I said, sir, that's a big question. I don't have any plans. He says, okay, fine, I'll plan it for you. You've done your graduation in tours and travels. I have no idea why I did that. But maybe because in the, sorry, but in the cultural quota, that was the easiest to get. I got in through cultural quota. So um, he says, you've done this. So you should, you know, go for a travel agency. You should open an agency and it will be good. I said, sounds not at all interesting. <laughs> so he says, then what do you want to do? I said, okay, give me a day or two. Let me just think what I want to do. So everybody, you know, my father's a CA, my brother was into insurance, and you know, my sister was in a buying house, so everybody was into jobs and everything serious. And suddenly, one day at the dining table, I said, uh, Papa, I said, yeah, I want to become a hero. He says, okay, finish your food. I said, no, I'm being serious here. <laughs> I, yeah, I, that, that's my calling. He says, how? I said, <laughs> again, no plans, no idea, but that's what I feel, you know. I feel that I should go to Mumbai. 
He says, okay. So, you know, in life we are three siblings. So I have an elder brother and a sister and then me. So I said, Papa, you have planned it for me. He says, how? He says, so we are three. So the saying is, hum do, hamare do, tisra ho to Mumbai bhej do. <laughs> so I said, I said, you laid it for me. I think it's simple. He says, okay, fine. Uh, <laughs> I can't help you in any, any way. I said, no problem. I'll, I'll, I'll find my way out. He's fine. So I, I took a train. I went to Mumbai, you know, on the station, typically filmy style. I got down, put my suitcase down, touched the floor. I said, hero ban ke jaunga. Again, I had no idea how because I didn't know anybody. The first friend in Mumbai was the coolie who helped me to the way out. He says, yeah, idhar se bhaada milega, rikshe mein baitne ka aur jane ka. So that was the only thing I knew. But anyway, I didn't know anybody. I didn't know a single soul. But I said, okay, fine, let's do this. So that's how I reached Mumbai. So there started a new chapter of my life. Um, that was the best chapter. Um, I remember um, not knowing anybody, just, just going for the auditions. And trust me, you know, people feel that auditions are good. Yeah, oh wow, he's gone for the audition. Trust me, it's the most embarrassing thing an actor faces. I've done that. So I've, I've got um, rejections through so many auditions, it's not even funny. And the funniest line I remember, which I really want to share with you all. So I went for an audition. Um, she said, um, you're rejected. I said, I didn't even say my line. She said, yeah, but you're rejected. I said, okay, fine. I take the rejection, which is fine, which is again a thing for everybody. I think rejections are very normal. It's, it's normal to lose. So take it easy, guys. All right. So I took all the rejections. I said, fine, but give me a reason. Why am I rejected? She says, uh, we are looking for a Khandani looking boy. So suddenly I had a big question in my head. Uh, I'm not even Khandani. <laughs> my parents never told me that. So I immediately called up my dad. I said, uh, we are Khandani, right? <laughs> so he's like, what kind of a question was that? But never mind. So all the rejections happened. But then suddenly, something happened which I had not planned. I became an RJ in Mumbai, radio jockey. I had no plans to do that. Suddenly, got a call. Some people said, why don't you, uh, you know, come and become an RJ? So I said, uh, okay, fine, I'll do that. So I was an RJ for one and a half years. Then I wanted to move on. I said, okay, fine, this is enough. Now what next? You know, let's do something else. So then I started television and then started the hosting chapter of my life. And uh, I remember how it changed things for me. Uh, so I was talking about rejections. So there was a show called Jhalak Dikhlaja. I don't know how many of you have seen that. If you haven't seen that, you really need to change your taste. It was a very good show. <laughs> yeah, trust me. All right, so there's a dance reality show. This used to be on TV. So I hosted that for uh, five years in a row. Um, so I remember how that happened. So I wanted to be a contestant on the show. I said, yeah, I'll be the hero, you know, I'll be dancing and, you know, getting the comments. So that was a big thing for me then. Um, I went to the channel. Again, uh, destiny followed. I was rejected. <laughs> and I said, okay, fine, but why am I rejected again? Yaar? I didn't even dance. I was just standing in front of you. They said, no, actually, we're looking at somebody who's really popular. So again, the reality check happened that I'm not even popular. I said, wow. Life is treating me really well. I love it. So anyway, I said, okay, fine. So I, I honestly, I got a little angry. The, by that time, I was getting a little bitter. I said, what is this man? Khandani nahi, this and that. So they said, would you host for us? Trust me, I was so angry. I would have said something else, but I took the opposite decision. I said, yes, I will host for you. So they were like, uh, are you sure? I said, yes. And trust me, that was one of the best decisions of my life that really changed the scenario for me, and also, if I may say so, it changed the scenario of hosting on TV. Why I say that? Because I remember when I used to see the hosts on TV, I would see them standing in a corner at a podium, very formal, invite, thank you, bye. I said, yeah, why is this here? This guy is running the show, you know, he's calling all the people, making them grander. Why should be uh, the host standing in a corner? Why not? Let's, let's try and bring in a change. I tried to do that. In the starting, up, people were like, Arayar, what is he doing? He should not be doing that. But thankfully, uh, things started falling in place. I started, um, you know, having fun with all the big superstars that time. And uh, thankfully, all of them gave a lot of love. And I think it was the blessing of the audience and all these people uh, that, you know, things started happening. And I started becoming a name in the industry. And I was really happy. I was, I was happy. I said, now, things are looking good. And, uh, you know, one person who stuck to me with faith 
Ma, meri ma, my mother. Why I say that? Um, so I'm a Malvinagar boy, Delhi. All right. So I'm a Delhi boy from Malvinagar. I remember we used to <laughs> sit and watch Film Fair Award Night, and my mother would look at Amitabh Bachchan and say, uh, "Everybody understands Hindi here. I'll be using a line in Hindi." So my mother would say, "Mickey, isko dekh rahe? That's my pet name. Yeah. So Amitabh Bachchan dekh rahe ho? Maine kaha, "Ji, tu na ek din jaroor iske saath jaake khada hoga." So I said, "Mummy, we are sitting in Malvinagar." watching <laughs> new year award show having moomkhali and popcorn how can you even think like that she says no it's going to happen and trust me that happened i hosted kbc with bachchan saab and that was a big day so i called my mom i said mom you got to be here so she came so i was like she's a typical punjabi mom na she was all excited dressed up in all i will talk to him i will tell him i said mom just relax he's amita bachchan she says so what i'm also manish paul's mom i said I said lovely. So I remember <laughs> Bachchan sir walking out, and my mother. Oh God, I can't stop laughing. Uh, Bachchan sir walking out, and my mother is standing there. She's all excited. Ah. So I said, "Mummy, relax, relax." Yeah. So Bachchan sir, no, she can't. Can't you? So mummy said, "Hanji, Hanji, you're very good. You know, just in case, sir, pin up your hand, make sure you keep it." So I'm looking at mummy, mummy, relax. So she's like, "Okay." So Bachchan sir, being he's the he's the most humble guy I've met. He looks at me and my mother and says, "Arey, inse to hum sikhte hain." Karke he walked out. Namaste, namaste. My mom is looking at Bachchan, Bachchan sir and saying, "See, I was saying that I was copying you." I said, "Mom, we copy him. He doesn't copy us, man." So that's a typical Punjabi mom. But I think uh, all these things work, yar. Uh, these, I think I've got a lot of confidence from my mother. Uh, she can go anywhere and talk to anybody, make um, uh, everybody a friend, you know. So all those things have really, really been with me, stuck to me. Um, again, uh, this confidence uh, thing we were talking about. So I was hosting an award night, first time in front of Mr. Bachchan. So first time I saw him face to face. So trust me, for a Delhi guy <laughs> from Malvinagar sitting in front of uh, Mr. Bachchan, I was like, oh God. So I'm standing and suddenly I looked at him and I said, how are you, sir? All good. So he's with no reaction because he didn't know me at all. So I said, uh, "Sir, I'm hosting in front of you. I think I deserve a hug." I don't know where it came from, and I su suddenly started walking down. So I we were uh, an inia. So my director is talking to me. Don't, don't go to him. Don't go to him. I said, "Ab to Delhi ka Punjabi chal pada, ab to rukega nahi." So I was walking to him, and everything is going in slow mo. Whoop, whoop, Pachan sab staring at me. Suddenly I walked. I said, "Okay, my career is over. I think I should just turn here and walk towards my car." And suddenly, Bachchan Sahab stood up gracefully. He hugged me, and I was like, "Wow!" Now I was so nervous, happy, everything, all the emotions together. Suddenly, I looked at Bachchan Sahab and said, <laughs> "Sir, how did you feel when I gave you a hug?" So again, he's looking at me. <laughs> oh, very nice. Thank you. So. Um, so I think um, honestly, um, if I talk about my life, I planned nothing. I had no plans in my life. Uh, but yes, when I went to Mumbai, uh, few things got stronger. That you know, I had a plan A. I never thought about it. So that was something which was there, but I never thought about it. Never understood that. That was the plan A. And that this is what I want to do. And I always keep telling everybody, you know, if your plan A is strong. Don't need a plan B, man. <laughs> so I never, never thought about any plan B. Uh, but yes, God has been really kind. The audience has been fantastic to me. The industry has given a lot of love. I feel happy. Uh, uh, without a plan, I went there with my gut, and uh, everything fell in place. So I keep telling everybody, you know, I meet a lot of people. They say, you know, we are planning this, we are planning that. Oh God, life is not treating us well. Some people talk about uh, depression. Some people talk that, you know, I got a rejection. I'm sad. Trust me, don't be sad. Yeah, come on. Life has a lot in store for you. And trust me, uh, you know, we keep asking a lot from life. So I, I keep using this line. You know, you should ask the universe. Things happen. And if universe is taking time, relax. They're answering my prayers. So your time will come. All right. Because I'm I'm quite greedy that way. I keep asking a lot. You know, one thing is full. I say one more, mm, one more. So I'm I'm challenging that. But I just feel that be happy always and uh, have faith in what you do. I think that's the most important. If you're confident, if you have faith, there is no looking back. All right. So ask from life. And uh, 
I just feel that uh, I'm, I'm happy to be here sharing my experience. I don't know I, how many people I could touch with what I uh, shared with you all. So uh, life, you know, we ask life, but life has a lot in store for you. And trust me, at times, life gives you back more than what you have expected out of life. So just wait, relax, things will fall in place, right? Had a wonderful time. Thank you so much. Love you all.